God bless you tonight. We're so happy to be back and to have been with you throughout the week. As we told you on tomorrow night, we will have a special message for the young people, the youth. For the youth will be the church of tomorrow. I would like for all of those of us, the ones of us who have young people in our possession, 
make sure we have them out tomorrow night. And I have a few surprises I like to share with the young people on tomorrow nights. Two or three special people that I think you would be interested in seeing. And we, uh, they are my friends and they are promised to be here with them. So we wanted to share this with the young people. Of course, those of you who are pertaining to the records, we have told you each night, all eight albums, we have copies of all eight albums as you go out the door. And we are always appreciative to those who support the record ministry. I'm somewhat like the pastor. I have so many my friends here throughout the week, and I wish I could just recognize them all. I have relatives. I would like, I'm going to recognize one anyhow. I'd like for my favorite auntie who lives here in West Dallas, Sister Curl Pepper, to stand up. Where is she at? That's here, though, right? Now, that's my father's youngest sister. Her husband is a minister right here in West Dallas. Uh, if I don't recognize any more, I want to do that. I've been a number of relatives and friends that I went to school with. And there's so many. I will be telling you a little more about that later on. Of course, Friday night, uh, our young people, we have what you call a Daniel Sing, is a young TV choir that sings for us each Sunday morning on television, be here Friday night. We'd like to share that with you, along with my wife who directs the choir. Now, tonight, uh, we would like to please to share with you several scriptures. One or several passages in particular, and we would like to call your attention to the book of Revelation, the 20th chapter, the book of Revelation. Notice the 14th verse. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Notice the 15th verse. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Now whether you know it or not, these scriptures here are talking about hell. If you don't believe it, listen at me again. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And our message tonight suggests a question. What in hell do you want? I just want to know that. What? Maybe I should read it one more time. And death and hell were cast into the lake, a whole lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Then my question is, what in hell do you want? I want to know what is it do you want there? 
When I was a boy, I never will forget uh, growing up in East Texas, I tried to make a successful shoe shining boy. And the man I was working for told me to go next door and get some change. And when I walked in to get the change from the man next door, he looked at me and, and uh, said, boy, don't you know you're supposed to go to the back? <laughs> and when I got to the back, he said, now, nah, what in hell do you want? <laughs> I never will forget that from a boy. I told him nothing, and I walked out. And that ended my shoe shining career. I realized right then that somewhat I was already in hell, and I didn't want nothing else in hell. Now, nah. the Bible speaks about hell. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. And it also points out that a lot of folk we think that are going to heaven might not be there. And then a lot of folk we think are going to hell might not be there. And I'm very serious about this thing because it's one or the other, heaven or hell. Now, let us look at what the... Bible, what God has to say about hell. First of all, in the book of Psalms, the ninth chapter and the 17th verse, mm -hmm. we get verification that there is a hell. Yeah. Now, many people do not believe in a literal hell. Yes. It is said that a poll was taken in America some years ago and 42% of the people asked said they did not believe in hell. Yes, Some seminary students were asked if they believed in hell, and the poll read that 71% of those students did not believe in a literal hell. All right. All right. All right. This is shocking coming from seminary students. Yeah. But my dear Christians and friends, no matter how many do not believe in hell, it is a fact that there is a hell. And the word hell is found throughout the Bible. Ah, some have said that the word hell comes from a Greek word, Gehenna. And it is used some 12 times in the New Testament. Sure. Name a few of them. Matthew 5, 22, mm -hmm. you will find the word. Yes, sir. Right. You'll find it also in the same chapter down around the 29th and 30th verses. Yes. Yes. Then in the 10th chapter of St. Matthew, the 28th verse, you'll find it again. Yeah. And then the 18th chapter of this particular, same particular uh, verse, or the 18th and 19th, or the 18th chapter and the 9th verse, you'll find it. Yes, then God. you'll find it in Matthew 23, 23rd chapter, the 15th verse, and the 33rd verse, you'll find it. All right. All right. Then you'll find it in Mark, the ninth chapter, the 43rd, 45th, and 47th verses. You'll find it also in the book of Luke, the 12th chapter, and the 5th verse. 
Then over in James 3, 6, you will find it again, right. the word hell. So we do have an understanding that hell is recorded in the Bible. Right. However, there are other references that could be given from both the Old and New Testament concerning the place called hell. For example, Psalm 16.10 and Isaiah 5.14 and also uh, the 14th chapter and the 9th verse of this particular chapter. Then Luke, the 16th chapter, the 19th and 31st verse. Revelation 20th chapter, the 11th uh, through the 15th verses. All of this will have to do with hell. Now, I'm here to tell you tonight that there is a hell. You might not believe it, but there is a hell. And then another thing I want to tell you, people will go to hell. I'm here to tell you. Now, what I'm here tonight to try to do, and that is keep as many folk as I can from going to hell. As I read the Bible, I'm led to believe that hell is not a comfortable place. Now, this is not really a shouting message tonight. It's a scary message. I would, look, I would like to look at the characteristics of hell. Come on. And it doesn't matter what kind of description I give hell tonight. Just remember it's a million times and more worse than the way I describe it. It doesn't matter how I describe heaven tonight. It's a million times and more better than what I can describe. Now, the Bible in Revelation, the 20th chapter, 15th verse will point out that hell is a lake of fire. It's a lake of fire. Now, you know, it may not be too bad in going there if it were just a cup full of fire. Or maybe a bucket full of fire. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But in Revelation, it points out that hell is a lake of fire. Yes. And you think about the lakes that you are familiar with yes. in your area. Yes. That's still a small lake. Yes. You think about some of the lakes. Think about Lake Michigan. Yes. And you picture Lake Michigan and around Chicago and Detroit. Yes. Right. Think about all of that water representing gasoline. Yes. And then imagine in your mind somebody igniting yes. a match yes. and throwing it into that lake and a huge bright flame of fire yes. balls up. Now that fire we're talking about is even hotter than that fire would be. I'm just scared of fire anyhow. Unless it's Holy Ghost fire. And then think about people being thrown into this lake of fire. Now, also think about the fire never going out. And think about the people thrown into the fire never burning up. Continuing to burn. And then in Luke 16, 23, it points out it's a place of torment. Yes, where you were just tortured. Yes, Have you heard about how they torture people sometime when you are a prisoner of war? Yes. Some of the POWs will tell you that the enemies have the enemy will have some 
peculiar torching. Hell is a place of torment. And then in Matthew, the 25th chapter, the 46th verse, it will point out that hell is a place of everlasting punishment. I've known them to be sent to prison for lifetime, to be punished lifetime, but they get there and stay a few years and they are paroled. Yes. So even when you are sent to prison for lifetime for punishment, you do have some hope. Yes. Because if your behavior is all right, yes. you just might be paroled. Yes. Not only that, but just a few days ago, I read where a young man was sentenced to death. Yes, sir. Sent to the electric chair. Yes, sir. And the Supreme Court overruled the situation. Yes, sir. And he doesn't have to worry about it anymore. Yes, sir. But I'm not afraid tonight, children, that the Supreme Court yes, will not have anything yes, to do with hell. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The Bible plainly points out that hell is a place of everlasting punishment. Think about burning forever. Think about suffering forever. Think about crying sorrowful tears forever. You think about it. It's mighty scary tonight. Hell is a place of everlasting punishment. And I have a question to ask you tonight. What in hell do you want? Come on, Come on, Maybe I better keep on talking about it. All right. Luke 16, 27 will point out that hell is a place where people pray. They have prayer meeting in hell. But I'm afraid the connection line from hell to heaven has been burnt out. I'm not afraid about that. And then hell is a place where they scream for mercy. You might ought to read Luke 16, 24. Where people are just screaming and shouting for mercy. I want to do a have a witness here. Then over in Matthew 12, 32, I'll find where hell uh, is a place where they never repent. Come on, come on. They're crying out, but we don't have any record where they ever repent in hell. Matter of fact, it's too late to repent. All of the preachers that have been really called by God, they are already gone to heaven. Or they will already be gone to heaven. And then Revelation 22 10th and 11th verses would point out that hell is a place of filthiness. It's filthy down there. People don't bath down there. Isn't that right? No water down there. No soap down there. And all of these clean folk on the outside, perfume and deodorant on the outside, changing clothes sometimes, three times a day, walking around with a dirty heart. Stop by to tell you one of these days. You don't change your way of life. Yeah. When you end up in hell, yeah. 
I'm mad afraid you won't have any change in clothes. Because the Bible points out that it's dirty down there. And my question is tonight, what in hell do you want? I told you it wouldn't be any shouting on this hell message. And then in Matthew 8, 12, it points out that hell is a place of weeping. It's a place where men cry. You know, there are some evil-hearted men. There are some rude men. I've seen men see little children die. Yeah. And it never bring a tear to their eye. Yeah. You see them, the little children, ah, uh, being neglected in Vietnam. Yeah. Some people are so hard-hearted, it doesn't matter what kind of film they show on television. Yeah. That's right. It just will not bring a tear to the eye. Yeah. Come on, River. Come on. I've seen men to have their closest of relatives to die and pass away. And they will never shed a tear. You know, there's something strange about a person that never cries. Nothing can make you cry. It seems to me that it ought to be something that can happen in the world yeah. that will bring tears in your eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you've never cried before, yeah. I dare you to go to hell. Yeah. There's something about the fire that burns in hell. Yeah. You're going to see some tears that you've never seen before. Yeah. And then another thing in Psalm 18:5, yeah. it points out that hell is a place of sorrow. Yeah. You will be sorry that you went there. Yeah. I wonder, do I have a witness here? Yeah. Listen, listen, listen. Ah. Psalm 18.5, then Matthew 8.12. Yeah. It's a place of outer darkness. Yeah. No light there. Yeah. You know, I've always been scared of the dark. Yeah. Think about you can't see nobody. Yeah. You just have to feel your way through. Yeah. A scary place. Yeah. Yeah. And then Revelation 14, 11 will yeah. point out that hell is a place of no rest. Yeah. Listen, listen, listen. You know, they give you a break in the penitentiary. Yeah. Yeah. You can rest in the pen. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. The slaves used to have a few resting breaks. Yeah. But hell is a place of no rest. Wherever you sit down is a hot seat. If you have a bed, it's a hot bed. I wonder do I have a witness here? And then in the book of Jude, about the 13th chapter, I believe it is, it's a place of blackness, of darkness forever. That means that the light will never come on. What in hell do you want? And then we've already told you in Revelation 19, 20, that it's a lake. A fire which people are cast alive. Yeah. Now, you know, it'd be all right to throw me in some fire yeah. when I'm dead. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. But you know, with my eyes wide open, yeah. I don't see how I could bear the idea of being thrown into a lake of fire. Yeah. When my eyes are open. 
I want each one of us here tonight to think about somebody picking you up. Throwing you into a lake of fire. Wish they had a witness here. Mark 3, 29. We'll point out that it's a a place of damnation. It's a world without an end. You know, what gives me consolation about this old world that I live in now? It has an end to it. It doesn't matter how hard I try to get. They're going to end one day. It doesn't matter how bad I have to cry. It's going to be over one of these days. But you know what's so bad, fellow preacher, with some people, they're going to have hell here. They're having hell here on earth. And then when they die, they're going to have hell again. I wonder, do I have a witness? Somebody said, well, Brother Preacher, uh, I look at church folk who are having hell also. I see Christian folk who are having problems. But the difference is, the results are different. Is that right? Because one of these days, hell will be no more for those who love the Lord. And then, well, Brother Preacher, you have told us all about hell. Then why don't you pause long enough and tell us who is going to hell? The Bible said that the beasts and false prophets are going to hell. Excuse me, Brother Preacher. But I just have to say that anyhow. Is that right? Uh And uh, the Bible also says in Revelation 20 that those whose names are not in the book of life are going to hell. The fearful, the unbeliever, the murderer, Uh the homonger, the idolater, and lie, you all of them are going to hell. Is that right? A lot of religious folk are going to hell. Because in Matthew 7, 21 through the 23rd verse, we'll find out that you can be religious but still lost. Because your religion might be throwing a stumbling block in somebody's trail. The unrighteous will go to hell. Those who are deceived will go to hell. Is that right? Brother Preacher, you have scared me here tonight. And you asked me a few minutes ago, What in hell do I want? I stop by to tell you, brother preacher, I don't want anything in hell. Now you have told me who will go to hell and how to go to hell. Now I'm wondering, can you tell me how to go to that other place? I stop by to tell you that Jesus Christ will save you tonight from hell. Is that right? Jesus has paid the wages of sin and he offers us eternal life. And if we will repent and believe on him, we will not go to hell. Is that right? And uh, and I'm wondering here tonight, what in hell do you want? And I've stopped by to tell you he's waiting to save your soul. And I want to tell you about another place that's not called hell. You can go there also. Is that right? And uh, 
As I move on here, I'm thinking about having the streets that are called Golden Street. There will be no night there. And there will be no uh, hardships there. Every day will be Sunday. Is that right? You know, as I move on here, I'm thinking about an article that came out in the news. And uh, a friend of mine uh, read the article put out by one of our billionaires. And uh, he wrote an article after going down to Houston, looking at the huge Astrodome. And uh, he said, you know, I'm going to build me an Astro City. And uh, and I will only have selective people in my city. This is actually a fight. I understand it was one of our Texas billionaires who is dead and gone now. And uh, he said, in my Astro City, uh, certain folk will not be allowed in it. The man must have been a segregationist. And uh, he said, you won't have to worry about it getting night in my Astro City. Because I will have 24-hour lighting system. And uh, and you will not have to worry about uh, thieves and robbers in my city. Because 24 hours security guards will be walking around in my city. The man went on to say, you will not have to worry about wintertime, not summertime in my city. Because year round, it will be 72 degrees. And uh, you know, a friend of mine, thank God, to Brother Elish Patterson Jr. And other ministers answered the man in that article. Yes, sir. And uh, they called him in the question yes, and said, We've read about your city, your dome city. Yes, sir. And uh, we understand that there are certain things that will not go on in your city. Yes, sir. But uh, we, as ministers of God, have come to tell you you forgot about that there are some things that will go on anyhow. Oh, yeah. They pointed out to the man, said, uh, we want you to know that death will still walk into your city. Oh, yeah. And we want you to know that there are several that diseases that will still walk into your city. It's a cancer, whooping cough, and common cold will walk down the streets of your city. And uh, they pointed out that old age would walk into his city. And they also pointed out that uh, they can mash a button and destroy his whole city. And uh, they summed it all up by introducing him to another city not made by the hands of man. Oh, Lord. And I'm here to tell you tonight about that city. Isn't that right? You won't have to worry about no more sickness. You won't have to worry about people lying on you. Isn't that right? You won't have to worry about being broken hearted. Oh, isn't that right? You'll have golden shoes on your feet. You'll have a starry crown on your head. Long white robe. You can walk around heaven all day long. Isn't that right? And I don't know about you tonight, but I've already made up my mind that I want to make heaven 
my home. Oh, isn't that right? And before I close here tonight, let me look at hell again. And I've done a little research on hell. You know hell spelled H-E-L-L. And I'm here to tell you every letter in hell represents something. Is that right? Yeah. I stopped by tonight to tell you that H, hell is hot, children. Isn't that right? Yes. Good God about it. And E, hell is evil. Isn't that right? And L, hell is a low place. Is that right? And L again is lonely down there. Oh, isn't that right? What in hell do you want? Oh, Lord, I'd rather have Jesus tonight. I'd rather have somebody. Come on, well, hold it all around me. I'd rather have somebody to pick me up and turn me around. I'd rather have somebody to put bread. Chat!